Welcome back, everyone, uh, to our Revelation study as we are unveiling Jesus, looking at his sovereignty, his holiness. Um, and something else that we're going to notice in this particular session is the, the compassion of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, here in session four, we're going to be chronicling the Church of Smyrna. And uh, we've titled this particular lesson, Enduring Seasons of Suffering. You know, perhaps you could relate. You know, too bad life isn't just one mountaintop experience after another. Uh, there are valleys in between, and sometimes those valley experiences are prolonged. Now, if we're willing to be honest and transparent with God, sometimes we cause our difficulties. Sometimes we're the reason behind our troubles by bad decisions, bad choices that we make, living a life that is contrary to how God wants us to live. And you could just expect problems to come. It's by his grace that everything just doesn't fall apart to begin with. But still, there are consequences to, to bad choices that we make. However, uh, there are times in our life when terrible things happen uh, to really good people. And we see that to be the case here with the Church of Smyrna. Um, as we look at them, it's important to realize that out of uh, the seven churches of Asia Minor, of who the book of Revelation is written to, only two do not have anything bad that is said of them by Jesus. There's no rip on their record, and this is one of those churches. And so you would expect everything to go their way, right? No, that's just not how life works. In fact, in this first century uh era that this church was in, the more you lived for God, the greater the persecution was against you, um, particularly from the hands of the Roman Empire. And so let's look at the church of Smyrna, and I wanted to just profile them for you and give you several facts about them. First of all, they were regarded as the most beautiful city the Greeks ever built. Now, uh, the city um, had a, a number of battles that took place, um, and it, it was actually destroyed utterly. And then one of Alexander the Great's four generals came and kind of revitalized the city, and it, it was dead, but now it, it became alive again, um, and the city was built up. And again, the Greeks just uh, considered this to be uh, their crown jewel. Um, How Smyrna was um, was basically its geographical plane was that you had houses that were on the top um, and then a slope that went right down to the water, right down to, right down, I guess, to the shore, to the ocean line there of the Aegean Sea area, okay? And so uh, it was beautiful and it looked like a crown, literally. And that's why they called it their crowning city because the houses on top of the hilltop uh, looked like a crown, and then it went right down its slope. It's a beautiful place to live. It was considered to be, again, one of the great Greek cities. Um, also, uh, the church was founded most likely during Paul's second missionary journey. Um, we, most likely, uh, Acts chapter 19 is that kind of range uh, when this church, because we know that Paul makes very clear that the gospel was, was heard and spread about in Asia Minor, and this is Asia Minor, and that's most likely how the gospel got there. Um, we don't have a, like a Church of Smyrna book uh, or an epistle like we say we do of Philippi or we do of Ephesus or we do of Colossians for Colossae, but we do know that this church was established and most likely during uh, that time in, in Ephesus. And in many ways, the book of Ephesians could serve as a letter to the church at Smyrna because the, that letter to the Ephesian church was circulated to all the churches in the region of Ephesus. So you can make the argument that Smyrna falls under that. Here's something else that's important to know is that they developed a major export of trade um, that was known as myrrh. So Smyrna and myrrh are very similar. And the word Smyrna is actually in three other places in the Bible, in the New Testament, okay? You might recall in Matthew chapter two, verse 11, when the wise men came, um, they, brought, they brought the gold, the frankincense, and what? The myrrh, that's Smyrna, okay? They brought Smyrna to the birth of Christ. Then we see when Jesus is on the cross, um, we see that he's being offered up, um, you know, something to help lessen the pain, that's an anesthetic. And then we also see when Jesus' body is being taken off the cross, 
in John chapter 19, verse 39, um, we see that Joseph of Arimathea, Nicodemus, and the women anoint his body with, guess what, myrrh, which is Smyrna. And again, as we mentioned, while um, we see what's going on on the cross, what's offered to him in Mark chapter 15. And so you see Smyrna was used as an anesthetic. It was used for burial. Um, it was something that had a major purpose. And so it produced an enormous amount of wealth in this region. Now, because of that, it invited a heavy concentration of the Roman Empire. You know, just like today, government gets their hands in our, in our money one way or the other. And it was no different then here with the oppressive Roman Empire. Um, they found their way to set up camp there uh, because of uh, the export of the myrrh, of the Smyrna uh, that went out. And so it, it was it was a well-known city. It, it was a, a beautiful city. It was a place that people wanted to live. It was a place where people relocated to work. Um, it had all of that going for it and more. And it becomes now something that we need to draw a contrast to because how you made this, because they, they basically harvest it from a, 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 a thorny plant or a herb. And it was a kind of a painful process to kind of crush it out to get what you need out of it. And that really describes, um, that's a good illustration to describe what was going on there, is they were being crushed by persecution. And what was coming out of them was the perfume, was the aroma of their commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I want to talk with you about the persecution of Smyrna now, because it was prolific. It was off the charts. Um, and there's a few things we want to mention here. Smyrna had intense pressure. They had intense pressure that was put upon them. You know, we see the word here. In fact, starting in verse 8 of Revelation 2, it says, And the angel of the church of Smyrna write, The words of the first and the last, who died and came to life. I know your tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich. And the slander of those who say that they are Jews, and they are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. And for 10 days you will have tribulation, but be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. You as an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church is the one who conquers will not be hurt by the second death. Now, they had intense pressure. That word tribulation, I know your tribulation. Jesus says, I know what you're going through. That word tribulation uh, could also be understood as suffering, and that word is dilipsis in the Greek language, and it means intense pressure. It's similar to the persecution that the Church of Philippi had that's described in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. It's the understanding of like stepping on grapes and crushing the grapes. That's what the pressure felt like, like carrying a heavy bird on your back that's weighing you down to the point that you're on your knees, like carrying a, a piano on your back, if you will. That's the intense pressure that they were facing from this persecution. Now, the next area of persecution really gives us an understanding of just how crazy this was. Smyrna faced intense poverty, intense poverty. Now, you talk about poverty today here in America, and you got people who claim they're poor, but they're driving around in, you know, beautiful new Mercedes Benzes or, you know, Escalades. And so like they, they, they're, they're poor because maybe they don't have a job, but they're getting assistance, public assistance. And that public assistance is paying for great things that a lot of us, you know, can't afford. Okay. So that's not poor. That's not poverty. Being poor is struggling. And there's, the Bible gives us several Greek words for poverty, and I want to give you two of them. One of them is here, and one of them's not. I want to give you an extreme case of poverty, um, and that is, is that it's penania in the Greek language, and it means that you just have enough to get by. So you're poor in the sense that you don't have any extra, that you can't afford to get anything else. You have just enough right now, so you're not doing good, you're not rich, you know, you're, you're struggling in a state of poverty because you just have enough to make it for today. And we don't know about tomorrow, but today you got it. So that's a sense of struggling. But what is intense poverty? Well, the Bible uses a word called potachia, and that's the Greek word that's used here. That means you got nothing. 
You have nothing to eat. You can't feed your family. You don't have the lights on. You got nothing. That's what this church was. Now, you might be saying, how in the world could they be poor if they're living in Smyrna? Isn't Smyrna this export capital right now with the myrrh? Well, they were the object of the Roman Empire's oppression. They were boycotted. They couldn't participate. They had businesses. They were left out. They were blacklisted. They, they, they were boycotted. And as a result, the Roman Empire thought, you know what? Uh, if we can't kill them by law, we'll starve them to death. And that's literally what was going on. They were being persecuted in business. They were being persecuted at the market. They couldn't participate in any acts that you and I do just going to store, just going to work. They were cut off. Now, why were they cut off? Because of their faith in Christ. Because Domitian set up camp here in Smyrna, and if you didn't worship him, you were on the outs with the Roman Empire. And so it was either worship the Roman emperor, or you would face the wrath of the Roman Empire. So much so that not only were they were essentially left out in the cold for things like daily necessities, we find out that Jesus said that you're going to be thrown into prison and some of you are going to be killed. Some of you are going to be martyred for your faith. And so they had intense poverty. Terrible. Next, we find out that Smyrna had intense people problems. There were Jews or people pretending to be Jews that weren't Jews. Sounds like today like church. You have people saying they're Christians, but they're really not Christians. You had Jews who, who, people who may have even had a Jewish descent, but they really weren't practicing Jews. They weren't converted Jews. They weren't Messianic Jews. They were fake Jews. And Jesus actually said they were of the synagogue of Satan. Yeah, that's pretty strong words there. And you have to label people like that. So the, they, these people were causing problems in the church because they were saying they had some level of authority concerning the Pentateuch and the Old Testament, in other words. So the church of Smyrna had it from the outside, had it from the inside, a double whammy, if you will. They had intense persecution. Now, what are the healthy attributes, though, of Smyrna? And their healthy attributes really help conquer the persecution, and they will help conquer your suffering in your life. I submit to you now that if you commit to these things, God will bless you and help you um, to weather the storms in your life. You'll be able to get through your seasons of suffering. And rest assured, Jesus knows. And here they are. We'll give them to you quickly. The church of Smyrna was faithful. They were faithful to God. Regardless of all that was going on, this church was faithful. And that is very important because believers would need to know that. And people who read the book of Revelation are going to need to know that. That if they enter the tribulation as an unbeliever and they come to Christ, stay faithful. But even now, as we walk this earth, stay faithful. Stay faithful to God. They were fearless. Jesus said, fear not. They're going to come throw you in prison. Your life's going to be required of you. Fear not. And this church was fearless. And then finally, fellowship. This church was committed to being together. They could have easily disbanded. They could have easily said, you know what? I got to make money. The myrrh business is doing good right now. You know, you have people in America that, that they can take off to come to church, but they make a lot more money on Sunday. So, they, you know what? I can't come to church. I can't come to church. I can't come to church. No, it's that I don't want to come to church because I got a better offer someplace else. Now, there are some people when they first start a job, they don't have seniority. They can't get off on Sunday for years. But then once you come off of that level, and now you're higher up, you need to make church a priority. The church of Smyrna, these believers could have easily turned heel and said, you know what, I got to make money in the myrrh business. I, I can't be associated with the church. No, their commitment to God, their association with Christ and with the church was a priority to them. I hope it's a priority to you and I. Again, we can learn a lot from these churches. And maybe we got to stop taking time off from God and start giving him more time. You know, we don't have anything close to what this church went through. Could you imagine not being able to buy a food for your family? Uh, you're persecuted to that extent. That's what was going on right now. And so the church of Smyrna is a reminder to be faithful, to be fearless, and to stay in fellowship with God and his church. Now, what was the diagnosis of Smyrna? What would, would they do wrong? And we know what the answer to that is. Zippo, none. Jesus had nothing to say against them, one of only two churches. And so then as we close, what was Jesus' encouragement to them? Well, we read the scriptures earlier, uh, but let's just go through it here now with some action points. For you right now, if you're struggling, do what Jesus said. 
Focus on the eternal victory of the resurrection. Now, how do we know that? Jesus opened up his letter to the church at Smyrna by saying, the first and the last. Well, what, that's, what is that a reference to? And came to life. That's a reference to the resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is life-giving. It provides a hope beyond the grave. And right now, they're looking at a grave literally. And so they were encouraged to focus on the resurrection. Very important for you and I when we're going through seasons of suffering to do the same. Number two, focus on eternal rewards. God wants to bless you. He wants to bless you here while you're living on earth, but he has blessings waiting for us. And that's, here's one of the five crowns. And verse 10 here says this, be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. In other words, there are gonna be some who renege on their faith, who recant. Don't do it, Jesus says. Be faithful even unto death, even as they have the knife to you. Even as they got yet the guillotine, stay faithful. And these believers were. You know, I can't wait to get to heaven. There's a lot of people to meet, but these are people you're going to want to hug. These are brothers and sisters in Christ that endured incredible persecution in the first century. And they are living this verse out before our eyes as we're reading this. Jesus said, be faithful unto death. I mean, how, how dramatic is that? In other words, this wasn't, it's all going to be okay it's that somebody can get thrown to prison, somebody can get out, and, and somebody's going to get killed. The church of Smyrna. And then finally, uh, this last one here. And it seems like it should be flip flop eternal life and eternal rewards, but this is how it's laid out. Focus on eternal life. Focus on eternal life. That is how you get through your seasons of suffering, whether it be grief, uh, whether it be uh, relational troubles, financial troubles troubles you brought on yourself, whatever it might be, focus on eternal life. Listen to what Revelation 2.11 says. We'll read again and we'll close here. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who conquers will not be hurt by the second death. The second death, well, the first death is physical death. The first death was what they were going to go through. Maybe their head was going to get chopped off. Maybe they're going to be beaten to death, stoned to death. We don't know what it was. But the fact of the matter is, is the Romans were going to brutally uh, hurt them. It wasn't, going to, it wasn't going to be quick. It was going to be something torturous that included pain. But Jesus says, that's okay. You don't have to fear the second death. What's the second death of the soul? See, they could take your life, Jesus is saying, but they can't take your soul. That belongs to me. Focus on eternal life. You know, sometimes you can go through things in life that feel like they're going to kill you. You know what? Some things might. In the big picture, nobody could take away heaven. Nobody could take away the promise of eternal life. And the Church of Smyrna is a lasting reminder of the perseverance, of faithfulness, of endurance. All these great qualities that some of these churches had were wrapped up in one in this little church. By the way, this is the shortest letter out of all of them. Um, and it's, a, it's the shortest letter, but it provides really the, the, the biggest reminder for you and I to really stay close to the Lord no matter what, to remain faithful regardless of whatever season we're in, to rest assured that Jesus knows, just like he knew here, he knows your suffering. And so the message is, is don't quit, don't give up, be faithful, be faithful unto even the most dire of circumstances and know that God's got you. Focus on the resurrection, on the eternal rewards to come and on the eternal life that God has promised to you. Let me pray for you. Our Father and our God, thank you for the Church of Smyrna and these brothers and sisters in Christ. And thank you for brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world um, who are in harm's way because of their faith. Lord, we thank you that this isn't all there is, that our citizenship is indeed in heaven. Help us, O oh God, to be strong, even in our difficulties, even when we're lonely, even when we're going through just doubts, even when we've caused problems, whatever it might be, O oh God, help us to hold on to the fact that, that you know, you know what we're going through. Help us to remember the resurrection and the eternal life and rewards you've promised to us. Help us, O oh God, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.